Please be seated. Good morning. I was born, baptized, and confirmed a Lutheran. I married into the Episcopal Church just as uh, Keith shared with us a few weeks ago. I'm now a 41-year Episcopalian, and I love every minute of it. I love the stained glass windows, the beautiful music, the scripture, the Book of Common Prayer, the traditions, and the acceptance of diversity, and the offer of love to all. Sitting in the pews here are people from all denominations, all religions, all backgrounds, political parties, and stages in their life with the Lord. These are challenging times for our city, our country, and our world. But I get comfort, and I am at peace when I'm at church. I believe that reaching beyond these doors and offering that same comfort and support to the larger community is what God is calling us to do. Allow me to share a few experiences where the Episcopal Church was monument. That's my granddaughter. <laughs> Allow me to share a few experiences that were monumental in the Episcopal Church in my life. The first is a story about my daughter, Lisa. When she was in middle school, she suffered from de- depression, eating disorder, and self-esteem issues. Our church had recently hired a youth pastor. This pastor got her attention and helped her to walk alongside towards healing and find the power and love of Christ during those difficult years. I'm not sure where she would be today if it wasn't the intentional commitment to provide financial support for the hiring of a youth pastor to support the teenagers in that parish. I'm not sure where she would be. I thank God that instead of her going down a tragic path, she's now celebrating her 14th year as a youth pastor in California. She's serving dozens of middle school and high school students, just like her youth director did 22 years ago. My second story is about my mom. She had flown into town to see us. My brother and his family lived in a nearby city, but she wasn't planning to see that that family, just ours. They had not been close for 20 years, and they they were not on speaking terms. You see, my brother had to get married right out of high school, and he immediately began his family. My parents had trouble accepting that. And because of that judgmental attitude, my family, my mom, and my brother drifted apart. Harsh words were spoken and never forgotten or forgotten or taken back. During my mom's visit, we took her to church. The sermon was about the power of God's forgiveness. The sermon was good, had the appropriate Bible verses. I didn't really think much about it. But as we were walking out of the church, my mom said to me, would you call your brother Jerry and see if we can come over? That one's not my grandchild. (laughs) Would you call my brother Jerry and see if we can go over this afternoon? I called my brother. Our family drove over there, and the reconciliation began. I thank God for that very simple sermon that Sunday morning. My third story is about feeding the homeless, the abused, and those that are in need. I love to cook. I cook for Harmony House for the women and children just a street away from us. I help feed the teenagers at Rare Breed, and I cook for events sponsored by the gathering friends. 
Our church supports these causes as well. And we also feed each other at men's breakfasts, at KFC, and helping hands, and Vinton meetings, and all sorts of other events. In fact, we're going to feed you brunch right after this service. But recently, Christ began doing community dinners. Christ Church started this a year or so ago, and we're doing it four times a year. Amazing things happen at those dinners. If you haven't been to one, go. I see fellowship between folks who have a home who aren't going to bed hungry or cold with people that are just hoping to live through another night. I see conversations. I see people smiling. I see people with full stomachs and sneaking an extra cookie or two. But most importantly, I see hearts are being warmed by those who are being served and by those of us who serve. We build relationships and community with one another under the common love of God, regardless of social economic issues. I recently heard that the only place to a chief executive officer and a homeless person shares the same cup is in church. When my family was young, our church was very important to us. I was working long hours. Carol was a working mom. Finances were tight. And our children were growing up in a crazy Los Angeles environment. It was the Young Families Program at that church that strengthened and empowered us. And it was a place where our children's financial, uh, spiritual foundation was built. We participated in the children's activities, the outings, the field trips, the conversations with other young families about how to be a parent. We were involved in the community outreach projects. We did them together, and even the simple gestures by senior members of the congregation who would give encouraging words to one of my children helped them grow to be strong and faithful Christian adults. Haley Cobb, four weeks ago, and Lorna Hammock, just last week, described those same experiences happening here at Christ Church with the youth program and the children's program. Thanks be to God. Things have changed over the years. Stores used to be closed on Sundays, and sporting events were never held on Sunday morning. Everything centered on the church, and giving and volunteer work and the needs of the community were organized and done by church members. On Sundays, we would come to church, hear the report on what we had done, and we would celebrate. Now many nonprofits and government agencies are doing some of that work. Sundays are not quite as sacred anymore to some people. And some of our older members in the church will look in the pews and say, where are the new people? Where are the young people? Fear not. Our ministries are still being accomplished. They're being accomplished at night, online, off-site, after work, at safe-to-sleep locations, bagging meals at one million meal gatherings. We're healing the sick in Haiti, volunteering for youth retreats, going on mission trips, and making pastoral care visits and bringing food to the shut-ins. Church isn't less important. It just looks different. God knows how to work, do work on Tuesdays as well as he does on Sunday mornings. In the, sun, in the September newsletter, I titled my article, What If? What if we didn't have all the ministries of Christ Church? What if we didn't do all the outreach programs? What if we didn't have Sunday school And this beautiful building where we provide so many services to so many people in this downtown Springfield area. What if we didn't have the the passionate care given by our priest to the shut-in and to those in hospital beds? What if we didn't offer adult Sunday school? And what if there were no sack lunches at the front door of the church for the hungry? That would be a bleak scenario. We're in the midst of an annual stewardship campaign, if you haven't figured that out already. Last year, 
most budgets were slashed because we had some families who left the church and their pledges weren't obviously renewed. Christian ed, youth and outreach programs suffered cuts. No raises were given and no new programs were funded. Can't dwell on that. All we can do is decide what we're going to do about it. If these programs are important to us, how are we going to step up to replace the lost revenue, the lost pledges? Our goal is to raise at least what we raised two years ago so we can get back to earlier funding. But wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could fully fund our Christian ed program, our youth program, our Sunday school programs, our outreach programs, that we, that we could develop new projects, new outreach services, and compensate our staff and expand our staff. We could be a beacon of life to those looking for a safe harbor. That is my prayer and my wish. I ask you that you prayfully consider what you can give in time, talent, and treasure. For those that do not currently pledge, I encourage you to begin the journey. Think about how much you spend at Starbucks or cost for a night out for dinner or that spontaneous trip to Sam's Club or Target or for a new pair of shoes. Step into that path of giving. If you already are a pledger, thank you. Consider increasing your gift. Perhaps you're giving $25 a week. Can you do 30 35 Perhaps you're giving 4% of your income or 5%. Can you take another percentage up? Maybe you're a $10,000 giver. Can you go to 15? I don't know where you are in the path, and that's not my concern. My concern is just to help you get on that path and ask you to reflect on the journey you have with the Lord and give back into relationship to what he has given you. Reflect on the scripture from Matthew where we recently heard, from where your treasure is, there will your heart be. During the past four weeks, we've heard from Haley, Keith, Charles, and Lorna about why Christ Church is important to them. Today, we ask why is Christ Church important to you? During the offering, we invite you to place your giving back cards in the plate where they'll be presented in gratitude to the Lord at his altar. You can also turn the card, your card in at the brunches that we have today, immediately after this service. Let me end my thoughts with a prayer. Lord, it is so easy to hold tightly to the money we have worked hard to earn and save. Help us to realize that you alone give us the ability to do our jobs and to earn that money. Help us to be generous in using your gifts to bring about peace and justice on earth and to also care and comfort for those in need. Father, every gift we receive comes from you. Help us to use these gifts we pledge today to share the gospel and expand our ministries so others may know of your love. Amen.